I want to shift gears slightly now away from specific metadata schemas and markup and talk about what to do with all of this metadata once we have it. Now, we answered that in part with the cookie recipe search. Um, what you do with all of this metadata is you build better search tools. What is called in information science jargon, resource discovery. A recipe for a cookie is a resource. Any piece of content on the web can be called a resource, a digital image of the Mona Lisa, what have you. A recipe for a cookie is a resource if we are looking for it. And a search engine is a tool to help you discover that or other resources. Now, we could have other discovery tools. In fact, there are many kinds of resource discovery tools, but search engines are so common that they're often what we think of first. And with good retrieval algorithms and good filtering algorithms and good interface design, it's possible that search engines are the most efficient resource discovery tool under certain conditions. So part of the answer to what to do with all of this metadata once we have it is we embed it in web documents right there in the source code of our web pages just like we saw with the cookie recipe. So that when a web crawler comes along and scoops up a copy of your web page, if the service that launched that crawler like a search engine, also has an indexer that can parse out the metadata that you've embedded in your resource, then you've just helped millions of people craft better searches and brought more traffic to your resources. Now remember from Unit 1, in the video where I talked about important distinctions in description, I drew a distinction between embedded and what I called linked metadata records. Right. Metadata can be embedded in your resource. For example, the copyright page in a book is a metadata record that's embedded within the book. Or, you can have a connection between a metadata record, which is a separate object from the resource being described, like, for example, a catalog card in a library catalog. The catalog card is in a separate place. It is a separate object from the book, but it points back to the book that it's describing. Now, schema.org, microformats, other forms of semantic metadata are obviously embedded. Embedded in the web pages that they are describing. In fact, I would go a, even a little further and say that it's almost meaningless when we're talking about semantic metadata of this kind, almost meaningless to talk about a metadata record because the metadata is embedded throughout the document. There isn't a record that you can readily identify. We looked earlier at meta tags, blocks of metadata that can be inserted into the header of an HTML document. And that more or less reproduces the idea of the copyright page of a book where you have a metadata record that's embedded in the book, but it's an identifiably separate piece of the book. It is a metadata record that's separate from the content. Semantic metadata loses that distinction between the object and the metadata record about the object because the metadata is not just embedded into your web page, it's really interwoven throughout, integrated into the web document. On the other hand, we have the equivalent of a library catalog card, the linked metadata record, where the metadata record is a separate object from the object being described. And there are many projects on the web that take that approach, that collect only metadata records, and those metadata records link back to content that's stored and maintained 
somewhere else on some other institution's servers and websites. Now, I've mentioned the Europeana project before. It's a portal to a collection of cultural heritage artifacts from museums and institutions across Europe. So let's look at one item in particular. This one. Now, I actually have no idea what this object is, and I don't read Swedish. This just happened to be one of the featured items on the day that I made this video. So Europeana has this metadata record. You will notice that the URL says europeana.eu. This metadata record lives on Europeana's servers. However, there is a view item at link, and if we click on that, it brings us to the Museum of Ethnographies website, and you can see that because it's right there in the URL. It's a different institution outside of the scope of Europeana. The original of this item, and I, by original I mean the original digital version. I assume the original physical object is also at the Museum of Ethnography in Stockholm, but by original here I mean the original digital image is at the Museum of Ethnography in Stockholm on their website, and Europeana simply maintains a metadata record about that object with a pointer back to the original digital object. Now on the other side of the Atlantic, we have the Digital Public Library of America, the DPLA, which has a similar mission to Europeana. It's a portal to a collection of cultural heritage artifacts, though clearly with a North American rather than a European focus, though to be fair, you can't really talk about North American cultural heritage without also talking about European cultural heritage. So clearly there's going to be some blurring there, but that's a separate issue entirely. Now the DPLA has this metadata record, a metadata record of this particular map. And again, you can see that this metadata record lives on the DPLA's website because it's right there in the URL, DPLA. The DPLA has this metadata record with a link back to the original object, which again is the original digital object. I don't know where the original physical map lives, though I assume it is also at the University of Utah. And that link goes back to the University of Utah's website where the original digital object lives. If we take a look at the DPLA's main page, we see that the DPLA has exhibitions, a timeline, and a map. So let's take a look at that. We have exhibitions on a variety of topics, activism in the United States, the Great Depression in, in the United States. We have a map that shows where objects in the DPLA's collection are physically located. And we have a timeline that shows how many objects are from what year in the DPLA's collection. Both the DPLA and Europeana work with many cultural heritage institutions, museums, archives, libraries, and the like. And all of these partner institutions contribute metadata records to the DPLA and Europeana, but those partner institutions keep the original digital objects. Neither DPLA nor Europeana maintain a collection of digital objects. They just keep collections of metadata records. 
When you have a lot of metadata records collected together, that is what's called a metadata repository, which we'll talk more about in a moment. I called the DPLA and Europeana portals before, but it's just as accurate, I think, to say that they're metadata repositories that are searchable and browsable. But now that brings us to the next question, which I'm sure you've thought of for yourself by now, which is, if all of these partner institutions are contributing metadata records to the DPLA and Europeana, how is that contribution being done? 